Hey, this is a camping date night. Yes, it is. We're having a picnic in the woods next to the amazing river. I wish I knew the name of the river for you. Well, there it is, right there. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So we're gonna answer a really good question for you tonight. Okay, Russell Streeter had this comment. He says, I've been watching your channel since the beginning. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. And I have a difficult question. I thought, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Says, if you could pick one two-week trip in the United States, where would it be? We already did the Southwest USA last summer. It was great. I agree. And now we're planning one more two-week trip next summer before the kids get too big. And we've been getting an email kind of like this a lot. And I think because so many new people are going into the RV lifestyle. And we were thinking, what are all of our favorite two-week trips? Like, if you only had two weeks, what would they be? Right. And Trish said, well, what if we made it 10 days? Because most people only get a week off, mm -hmm. right? They can only put together five days from work. We're all very busy. Mm -hmm. And you get sandwiched in those weekends. You leave yeah. on a Friday night. Yeah. So what could you do in 10 days that are epic trips around yeah. the country? So we got into a long conversation and we went through all of our travels in the United States only, even mm -hmm. though there's some pretty epic trips in Mexico and Canada and New Zealand yes. that we've been to. But we thought, all right, let's 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 pick the top seven. Well, we came up with seven, actually. So it's our seven trips that we think would be the most memorable, highly recommended for 10 days. Yes. Numero uno. And we're gonna work from the West Coast to the East Coast. This is in no order of how much we loved each one of these places. That's right. So the first one is the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. And we believe the Central Coast is a good starting place. And you can either go north or you could go south. Yeah, so we, we thought Big Sur down to Pismo Beach, mm -hmm. including San Luis Obispo and Paso Robles was, is stunning. Totally. And that can absolutely consume all of your 10 days and then some. <laughs> but if you had a little bit more time, mm -hmm. like Trisha, you could go up north and head up to the PNW. Yes. Or you hit south. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You could head up to the north and you could hit Napa Valley. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. The Redwoods. Mm. You could even go up into the PNW. Yes. And you could have the best time. Yes. Or if you haven't spent a lot of time in Southern California or Arizona, you could go down south to Palm Springs mm -hmm. and Joshua, Joshua Tree, so Joshua Tree National Park. So those are kind of like our add-ons if you had more time to go north or south. But we thought what's breathtaking and stunning where you'll never forget yeah. in that drive on the California One mm -hmm. from Big Sur down south, Bigsby Bridge, we will never forget. It's something that will linger with you. It's a feeling yeah. that will just never leave your heart. Yeah. So that's why it is in the top seven of our trips to remember. And so you'll notice, I mean, we've been to a lot of places and there's a lot that we're not gonna talk about. Like even what we've just done coming up from, from Uray to Estes oh. to here is, is gorgeous. And, and, and Garden of the Gods in Colorado. I mean, there's so many great things to do. But we thought if, if again, going back to Russell's question, if you only had two weeks, right. we thought that the criteria should be a memory of a lifetime. Right, you know, and other people might say, okay, I would never drive that much, but au contraire, yeah. we have <laughs> met so many people who have decided we are going on this trip and we are gonna bust a move. Yeah. So this is, you know, inclusive of the best move Mentality. I was in a conversation with a couple of RVers. Um, they they just rent. They both they're they're related, and they both rented a Class C. And I said, "Well, how long you're out?" And they said, 12 days." And I said, "Where have you been?" And they said, "Well, we started in San Diego. We went to Joshua Tree. We went to Bryce. We went to Zion. We went to they include the Grand Canyon, I, something like that." Anyway, we met them in Bozeman, Montana. They went all through Colorado. All through Colorado. So, you know, and there's gonna be a lot of comments saying you can't do that much in that short a period of time. Let me tell you something. You can, you and can. we've seen it. Yes. I mean, do you want to spend one night in every single spot and move that fast? You know, it's not ideal, but who cares? Yeah, if you're not full-time RVing or you don't have an extended break or a sabbatical and you just have a limited amount of time you want to see the most you can, that's what this video is for. Yeah. All right. So, number one was the 
Big Sur Central Coast area. Yes. Uh, number two on the list. Southwest. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And we are definitely partial from the Southwest being from the Southwest. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit tricky when it comes to only having 10 days because although it's all very close together, there's different freeways to get you there. Mm -hmm. So it's actually kind of difficult to do Arches and Moab the Grand Canyon and Zion because of the the way the, the way routes are. Shaped. So you, there is a bit of driving involved when you do this. So if you had to pick the most epic things out of the Southwest, you have to see Zion. Yeah. Bryce is amazing. And then Arches Monument, is spectacular. Arches is spectacular. <laughs> and Monument Valley is surreal. Yes. It's surreal. It is. I mean, yeah. I mean, to be on the Forrest Gump, what do they call it? Now? The Forrest or, Gump Highway, Forrest yeah. Gump Point. They yes. call it. It's it's amazing, and so that area, I think, like Monument Valley. So Trisha and I were kind of at odds here a little bit yeah. because she really thought the Zion is where the magic was. Yes. Because it's majestic. It's mm -hmm. grand, right? Like mm -hmm. Yosemite. It's 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 grand like mm -hmm. Yosemite, but it's the wall shoots straight up from the valley, and yeah. at night you can see a bazillion stars and but the red of the mountains. It's amazing. Monument Valley is quiet and surreal, and what I love is the purple and the orange, mm -hmm. stuff that you see in a painting and you think, oh, there's no way that's real. And then you go there in the golden hour and you think, wow. Okay, but if you do Monument Valley, you have to go take the drive below the mittens. Yes. And so that's when it really comes home. You're like, what is yeah. this place? If you have a tow vehicle, and it doesn't have to be that high clearance. We saw some low clearance cars out there. Um, I mean, it, it might take a little bit of a beating, but it, if you have a, if you're a towable RV, disconnect and watch that video because it's a great loop and it's really mm -hmm. where it's spectacular. Well, and it's really great for families of all ages that mm -hmm. not everybody can go for a big hike or anybody that is limited with their mobility. Yes. So you can get in the car and you can really feel it. Yeah. And and not actually have to hike. If you can if you can fit in the Grand Canyon, do so because it's the seventh wonder of the it's one of the seven wonders of the world and it's amazing. But if you can't, I would be more partial to Bryce, Zion, Arches, mm -hmm. which of course is three of the mighty five in Utah, mm -hmm. and then of course what we were talking about, Monument Valley. And if you can squeeze in the Grand Canyon, then that's cool. Then two thumbs up to you. Yes. So the third trip is what we're going to call the National Park Dream Trip, and oh. it's the trip that we are on right now mm -hmm. and we're talking about the Tetons through Yellowstone we'll stop in Bozeman on your way to Glacier, Glacier National Park absolutely stunning and for anybody who is a National Park junkie this is like the creme de la creme oh but anybody who likes a little Wi-Fi little cell phone <laughs> coverage <laughs> yeah you can have that too because the Tetons are kind of connected to Jackson Hole yep and then on your way, after you leave Yellowstone and you start making your way to Glacier, you can stop in Bozeman. And Bozeman yeah. is out of control. We love Bozeman. And the week, the video after next Sunday, so two weeks from now, you'll see our visit in Bozeman where Trish is doing so much cooking. <laughs> and the, the town is, is charming, mm -hmm. great food, beautiful views, great mountain biking. We love Bozeman. So if you get a little pit stop in Bozeman on your way to Glacier National Park. But getting back to the Tetons, mm -hmm. I re-fell in love with the Tetons on this last trip. It's the third time we've been there, but it just struck me differently this time. Yes. I don't know if it was because we were there a little bit earlier in the snow-capped mountains, how green it was, but it was spectacular. If you haven't seen that video, after this, go back and watch last week, last Sunday's video, because the Tetons is magical. Marvelous. Yes. So, all right, so we've got the Tetons, Yellowstone, Bozeman, to Glacier. That's a lot. That is so much. And if you had to break those up into two trips, you absolutely could. But what you're going to get from them is wildlife, mm -hmm. hiking, mm -hmm. outdoors. You are going to feel like you hit the jackpot yeah. Yeah. as far as your national parks are concerned. And I, you know, I can hear the comments already that this is, this is too much stuff, but I'm telling you, <laughs> we talk to a lot of people. Yes. We talk to a lot of people I hear. And, and a lot of people that are out on a big, epic summer two-week trip, and this right. is this is what we hear. Not everybody has a whole summer off no. or a year sabbatical or no. goes full-time. People say, I have these 10 days, I'm gonna take yeah. one week off, I'm gonna sandwich those weekends, and I'm going. And I talked to that other couple that I mentioned yes. that we met here in Bozeman, because that's where we are right now. And I said, so you staying in one, one site, one place every night, and they're like, and you're moving every day? They're like, yeah. 
You know, so they're rolling in. Yep. But they're waking up at six. They're having breakfast. I could see them kind of meet at the RVs. Yeah, they're and having they were, their powwow. They're they were talking about what they're doing. Gone by nine at the next destination. I'm like, all right, well, that's what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? And now, but they got the RV bug. Yes. So they're going back to California and they're going to buy an RV and then yeah. the, and then they'll do it again. Right. And they'll do it again. And and I, 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 I just take a little time out before we get into the fourth trip. A lot of people that write in, you know, I'm disappointed that you didn't do this and this and this. I've said this so many times before, I'll say it again. You don't have to do everything on your first visit. Right. You can save some for the fishes, save some for later, you know? <laughs> go back, and every time you go back, you can explore another little place and another little place, and a few years down the road, you'll really feel like you know a place. And I think that's what makes RV travel so fun. Mm -hmm. Not conquering it, just enjoying it. Right, and if you truly are in the RV lifestyle, you're becoming a local, you're staying longer, yeah. you're really diving into the places that you yeah. love, but that can unfold over time. So yeah. this is to get that RV bug in you mm -hmm. and get you out and exploring and seeing this country because it is so diverse and so gorgeous yeah. and it has a checkbox for everybody. Unbelievable. So number four is the Smoky Mountains Bourbon Trail in Kentucky. Oh, oh my gosh, the Smoky Mountains. First of all, they're free. Yeah, they're right. You they can are, go are. ahead. It's the most populated, you know, most visited. Most visited park. national park in the country. Yes, and I do have a feeling that it's because it's free, it's huge, and it's also connected to a lot of family mm -hmm. activities. But if you don't have a lot of time, really pick what you want to do in this gigantic, gorgeous park. Yeah. And then there are also a lot of drives, and then start making your way through the Bourbon Trail. Oh yeah. Seeing Tennessee so beautiful mm -hmm. and making your way through Kentucky. Yeah, so I mean there's so much to do in Kentucky. We really love Kentucky. I mean that's where you get the quintessential picket fence with the trees that cover the roads as you're driving down. It's, it's gorgeous and the yes. bourbon trail like Trish said. Um, one of the things about Smoky Mountain that y'all mentioned is that's where uh, the Chimney Rock hike, which is not a beginner's hike, more of an intermediate hike, mm -hmm. one of our favorite hikes ever. ever. Yeah, and so I think that's where the Smoky Mountain really unfolded. Gatlinburg, um, you know, Trish mentioned in the last video that Jackson is a fun town because it's set up to, for the tourists, great eating, shopping, but it's not kind of gimmicky. Gatlinburg, a touch of gimmickiness. Pigeon Forge is like full out carnival. Okay? Yes, it's and, like a carnival. Your yeah. kids, if they love rides and doing fun stuff like that, they are gonna go bananas. Yeah, yeah, but that's where you get the 99 cent store right next to the 98 cent <laughs> store. Or the store. It's, it's that kind of vibe. So you pick what you love to do and it's there. But so. for us, we like to just stay outside of the National Park and then we, we kind of bypassed Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg and then we went right into the National Park to do the hiking and to do all that stuff and we loved it. But Stunning. can't say enough about Tennessee and Kentucky. I mean, I you really- You are gonna meet some of the nicest people there. We've friendly. met the nicest people across the entire United States, but there's a little something extra yeah. in Tennessee. Little little extra friendliness in <laughs> Tennessee. Okay, number five, and the only place, the only trip that does not have a national park, mm -hmm. which I think is says something, and that is Michigan. I can't believe it. the Upper Peninsula is not a national park. Well, it's probably a national something, but it's not a national park. <laughs> the camping, the bike riding, you're on the Great Lakes. Yeah. Like, it's absolutely stunning. So for our Michigan trip, our two, two, 10 day Michigan trip, we're thinking Grand Haven State Park. Yes. Or Grand Haven, and if Grand you can Haven. get into the state park, that would be great. Yes, you're That's right there you... next to the lighthouse yeah. and the whole thing. And then from there, and there's so much to do in that area, then from there, Traverse City, mm -hmm. Mackinac Island. Just stop it right now. <laughs> Mackinac Island is amazing. And then from Mackinac Island, you cross the bridge. Yes. And then go, as Trisha was saying, you go up in the Upper Peninsula. Are you a youper? Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. Have you, have yeah. Are you a youper? Have you been to the Upper Peninsula? It's a rite yeah. of passage. Yeah. So, I mean, again, you could spend two weeks in any one of these spots, but if you really wanted to move through it, that that's, that's the, yeah. I Pretty mean, summer sunny. in Michigan is summer. Iconic. It is. Yes. Yeah. Big shout out to Michigan to be included on these trips because most everything, unbeknownst to us, had a national park, which we right. were surprised. We put the list together and we go, how about that? Look, ev almost every one of Everyone. the trips had a national park. And I think it's because the national parks, they're national parks for a reason. Mm -hmm. there, there's something about them where you can just extract yourself out of your daily normal life mm -hmm. and look up and say, 
How is that possible? And if you don't want to, you won't have cell coverage anyway. That's right. So you right. won't be able to think about anything else. And that's good. And, and that's a lot good. of places here in Bozeman don't have cell coverage, like right now. Right now. Or the campground that you're going to see us stay at the Sunday after next. I think it was Long Air, Lang Air, Langor, Langor Campground. Beautiful yes. campground. Yes. And zero cell phone coverage. But I tell you what I really liked about that. What? If you're going out for like a weekend, like a weekend warrior and you're out with your kids, yes, it's cool because without cell phone coverage, they're forced to like just make up games with sticks. Rip that band-aid off. <laughs> Rip it yes. off. We're going to have fun together. Yes. Okay, so that's five, Michigan. Now let's head up northeast, which is where we're heading this season, to Acadia, Kenny Bunkport, Maine, <gasps> Newport, this area. Yes. The Upper East Coast. All of the East Coast is gorgeous. The Upper East Coast has something that's, well, first of all, the snow doesn't melt until later yeah. in the year, right? Yeah. So it unfolds itself to you later in the year. It's absolutely gorgeous. We were able to dig for clams. Yeah. Okay, we were able to go to little bakeries, little shops. You can oh, go the to red the barn. Cake. You gotta mention the red oh, barn again. The red barn, again. barn is so yeah. good. And and that's where Trish had the bakery, uh, the the powdered powdered everything. Just everything. But Acadia National Park really is beautiful. Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah. And also the Cape. Yes. Absolutely awesome. Okay, so that was six, and then here's our seventh. Drum roll, please. Well, In no not particular yeah. order. Well, east, west, west, west to east. To east. Okay, but so now we're going to drop down. We had to include Florida. And come to think of it, this doesn't have a national park. So forget it. It does. Tortuga is a. Oh, it does. Uh, not Tortuga, but the. What is that? The Tortuga National Park. Yeah. In the Key West. The turtles. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. I'm, I'm a turtle swimming. You're an underwater turtle. I'm a, just to be look, clear. Look, this way. I'm swimming. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so the uh, the Key West. So we, 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 we thought. One of our favorite memories of Florida was Destin oh. and Sarasota Beach. That's where you get the white squeaky sand. Okay, so right now we're up at the top of Florida, okay? On the on the west. So if you go west, you can do Destin. If you're on the east, you do St. Augustine. The Keys is really where it's at, uh, especially maybe in the wintertime when it's a little bit colder. Because I know you this get to winter, escape. we got a lot of pictures from people who are out there and we're like, wow, it really does look good there, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. But, and then like what Trisha's saying, you can go all the way to mile zero where Hemingway had the house and you've got the, the buoy that everyone yes. takes, the infamous buoy picture you can take and then you can go out to the Tortuga Islands. Yes, we didn't get a chance to do the no. Tortugas, but we really want to do that. But there's something about driving across that bridge Yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm in the Keys. And then you see all yeah. these different little things off of like they're just shooting off with boats and yeah. little towns and villages and then you just keep going and south and south the, and south. And that's the mental image, driving down yes. there. And so we thought each one of these trips in our mind had this ingrained mental image beauty of wow, that was really an experience. Or and wow, I can't totally believe we did different. that. Yeah, or totally different. Places places that make you kind of feel that you're somewhere else. Yes. Just like three little tips to give you a smoother road ahead. Yes. Right? Yeah. First, Especially traveling this fast. Yes. Because you, you need to be prepared. Yeah. If you're going to be hitting it hard. Mm -hmm. So first, really quick, right off the bat, is have your own food. You don't want to be held hostage by some mm -hmm. tiny little town or gas station snacks. And that's the best thing about an RV is that you get to go to the bathroom on the road. Yes. The drive days that you have your own food. You have your resources. That you're not going out to every single meal you're eating out and feeling yes. like you're getting nickel and dimes. So take advantage of that by having the food. Right. And then the other thing is make sure that it's not just your trip, but it's like our trip. Mm -hmm. So everybody kind of needs to pitch in. They need to say where they want to go, what's important to them, and then see what you can do, how many things you can include in that trip across yeah. wherever you're going. And maybe as a family, if you're traveling as a family or a couple, find out where are some spots that are important to everybody. And maybe if you're traveling this fast, you could pick one or two locations where you're gonna spend two nights yeah. or just enough. Cause there's some things that you have to be there in the morning or you have to be there in the evening. Mm -hmm. And we talk to a lot of people that are doing these big epic summer trips and they're moving every day, which means they could be missing out on certain things that are done in the morning. So maybe mm -hmm. pick one or two spots that you just really think, okay, the, the, this is going to be the highlight and spend a little bit extra time there. Right. Yeah. One, one quick tip on when things go wrong. <laughs> Cause they go wrong. I think we have a watertight seal now. Okay. Things are going to happen that are going to completely change your trip that are out of your control that you could not predict. 
very quickly adjust and adapt to whatever your plan B is gonna be. Yes, we call it the dip. Yeah. And this is when your expectations fall short, but the quicker that you can build that bridge to get over it mm -hmm. and come up with a plan, like you're saying, plan B, and just roll with it because so that you don't lose time. Yeah, if you're, if you're planning a trip for 10 days and it's all planned out, one thing goes wrong and the rest of the, the remainder of that trip is off track. Mm -hmm. And so it's gonna change. And so just don't spend too much time morning the trip that yes. you planned yes just immediately say okay this is still gonna be amazing it's still gonna be a memory and just move right into okay this is how it's gonna be and just know yeah I, and I would say emotionally prepare for the fact that you know, you're gonna go do these trip ideas in 10 days or two weeks mm -hmm. you're gonna be exhausted yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be worth it right. and you're going to remember it for the rest of your life and it's worth doing. I think that it's also helpful to give little compliments along the way because you're going to be doing new things in new situations Yes. and like let the people around you know that you love them. That's a great idea. That they're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing a good job so that you know it kind of keeps spirits high. You yes. want to keep spirits high. So we've been to all the places that we've recommended on these trips and so down below I included a link to the videos in all of these places. So if that if you're deciding you're gonna to go to the Tetons, you're gonna to go to Florida, you're gonna to go to Michigan or whatnot, you can watch that particular video, maybe to get some ideas of things to do when you're there. Yes. And uh, you know, that's it. So we're we're right now headed out to Nova Scotia and if the border doesn't open soon, we're gonna have we're gonna be quickly moving into our plant B. But yes. But, but so far we're we're still on track. And this season, um, uh, it's kind of one of my favorites. Well, if the border doesn't know, we could just stay in Bozeman forever. <laughs> we, we do like it here. So we're excited to share with Bozeman. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be going through Sun Valley and then Bozeman, and then we're going to continue to make our way out east. Yeah. So very cool season. We're glad you're here. And uh, if you're new to KYD, join us. Join we, us. New, We'd love to have you. Yeah, new video every Sunday, 7 Central. So that's it for this week. We're going to try and make this smoke into a yeah, fire. Yeah, we're going to get a proper fire and we're gonna just chill out, so. And other than that, we will uh, see you next Sunday in Sun Valley.